Science Department in the Center of Advanced Biomaterials at Chanam National University. Today, I am going to give a brief introduction on the paper recently published in November 2021-inch anode biofilm maturation time, stable cell performance time, and time course electrochemistry in a single-chamber microbial fuel cell with a brush anode. Before going into the details, please like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon to get notification for upcoming videos. I am going to throw some light on this article in the following sections. Before going into the details, I would cover major topics briefly. First, I would go through introduction, then materials and methods followed by results, and discussion, and finally conclusion. Introduction, in introduction I would solely focus on our objective, some of the definitions, and electrochemical characterization techniques. In MFCs, for accurate and reproducible experimental data, it is very important to have a sufficiently mature anode biofilm with stable performance. However, anode maturation and stable cell performance are affected by various factors such as a system architecture, inoculum, substrate, external resistance, and other operating conditions. It is important to know operation time for attaining a mature anode biofilm and stable performance accurately in the most common system, a single-chamber cubic MFC with a graphite brush anode, this. Cell type has been widely used because of its simple structure, small size, easy operation, and high performance, by using accurate definitions and accurate experimental methods, because they are closely related with reliable data production. The term startup time has been widely used for the operation time to reach stable performance. However, startup literally means starting or initiation. To approach this issue more precisely, we define anode maturation time as operation time to make the most mature anode biofilm and the tested MFC and stable cell performance time as operation time to reach its maximum sustained performance. Non-destructive electrochemical techniques, linear sweep voltammetry, polarization and anodic cyclic voltammetry were performed to diagnose whole cell electrochemistry and anode performance, respectively. Next is materials and methods used. For single-chamber cubic microbial fuel cells were constructed by using a polycarbonate cube. A cubic chamber had an empty cylindrical bed volume of 28 milliliter. A titanium plate was used as a cathode current collector. A non-woven fabric was attached onto the projected side of cathode to prevent a short circuit. An activated carbon-based, air cathode using polyvinylidene fluoride as a binder was used in this study. A brush anode was heat-treated and installed horizontally as close to cathode as possible, to maximize performance. Anodic compartments were inoculated with the wastewater and MFCs were operated with a fixed external resistance of 1000 ohm at room temperature. After one week, MFC systems were operated in a fed batch mode using 50 millimolar phosphate buffer solution as medium. MFC voltage was measured every minute. Measurements of linear sweep voltammetry polarization test and anodic cyclic voltammetry were performed using a potentiostate every two weeks of operation, 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th, 15th and 17th weeks. Power, current and resistances data were measured and calculated. To investigate the effect of the explanatory variables on the response of interests, a simple and multiple linear models were considered. To investigate the effect of the explanatory variables on the response of interests, a simple and multiple linear models were considered. Why is response and X is explanatory variable? Further I will explain results and discussion. After the inoculation phase, the synthetic medium had been used and the measurements were started. From first to third week, all MFC voltage increased. MFC voltages decreased as the optimum external resistors were used after the third week. MFC voltages became stable during the stable performance period after the ninth week. Operational performances during the voltage plateau were compared. Three MFCs that is MFC2, MFC4, and MFC3 showed better performance than MFC1. To evaluate MFC performance, LSV polarization test was performed every two weeks. Power overshoots were detected at the third week in all MFCs. To prevent the power overshoots and maximize MFC performance, 
optimum external resistors, 50 or 100 ohms were applied for MFC operation. The three MFCs performed better than MFC1. Performance values during the stable performance period 9th to 17th week were averaged for comparison. As with the operational voltage and current, the three MFCs perform better than MFC1. Calculated results for these MFCs the maximum power density, maximum current density and optimum current density are compared with MFC1 in this slide. Maximum power density for MFC4 is greater than MFC2 is greater than MFC3 is greater than MFC1. Maximum current density for MFC4 is greater than MFC2 is greater than MFC3 is greater than MFC1. Optimum current density for MFC2 is greater than MFC4 is greater than MFC3 is greater than MFC1. To sum up, three strong MFCs, hashtag 2, 3, 4 produced maximum power density 2.8 to 3.6 times larger, optimum current density 2.5 to 3.0 times larger and maximum current density 2.3 to 2.8 times larger than those of the MFC1. In four replicates, there are two MFCs having very good performance MFC2 and MFC4, one cell was good that is MFC3 and one was bad MFC1. The rate of having good MFCs was 50 to 75 percent. Therefore, to obtain the experimental reproducibility afterward, it is recommended to inoculate at least four cells to have two or three good performance cells. This data showed that the initial performance influenced the subsequent performance. The three strong MFCs showed continuous performance enhancement and higher power output during the initial nine weeks and produced good performance during the subsequent stable period. However, MFC1 experienced a performance drop initially and did not perform well afterward. By using polarization curves, polarization resistances were calculated to characterize internal resistance distribution in the cell. Anode polarization resistance was focused on this part since it is closely related to anode biofilm characteristic. The three strong MFCs showed relatively stable and low anode polarization resistance. However, MFC1 had unstable and high polarization anode resistances. On average over the entire period, MFC1 had the highest anode polarization resistance. Cathode polarization resistance values were so similar each other. The order of cell internal resistance values was similar to that of anode polarization resistance since cathode polarization resistance were similar. Optimum external resistance is proportional to internal resistance. To sum up, the weak MFC1 had the anode polarization resistance 7.5 to 23.9 times higher, internal resistance 2.1 to 2.5 times higher, and optimum external resistance 2.2 to 2.5 times higher than those of the strong MFCs. MFC1 experienced the rapid increase in power and current in the 17th week. Anode polarization resistance, internal resistance and optimum external resistance decreased than those in the 15th week. Even though the same inoculation conditions were used in all MFCs, a bad anode was found in MFC1. Anode polarization resistance accounted for a major portion of internal resistance 47 to 69 percent in the weak MFC1, whereas anode polarization resistance accounted for a minor portion of internal resistance 4 to 22 percent in the strong MFCs, while cathode polarization resistance accounted for 78 to 96 percent of internal resistance. For more accurate measurement of anode performance, anodic CV was performed. Because a potentiostat regulates anode potential with an external power source, influence of other factors can be minimized. In the three strong MFCs, CV showed typical S-shaped curves and current production increased over time. However, in MFC1, CV showed an S-shape and a current plateau in the 5th and 7th weeks. From the 9th week to the 17th week in MFC1, its CV showed a straight line shape. Current production increased during the initial 9 weeks, reduced drastically in the 11th week and reached the highest value in the 17th week. In the final week, 17th week, current production was highest in MFC3, 24.44 mA, 
followed by MFC2, 22.31 mA, MFC4, 21.73 mA, and MFC1, 17.09 mA. Unlike the LSV polarization result, the anode current production of MFC3 was the best in CV results. However, its CV area was small than those of MFC2, 3, and its cathode resistance, 43.4 ohms, was a little bit higher than them, 41.7 ohms in MFC2, 42.6 ohms in MFC4. Overall, various factors seem to be involved in MFC performance. Anode CV test is a good method to evaluate anode performance alone, because it is free from other limiting factors, i.e. cathode performance. And when anode polarization resistance was too low, i.e. In MFC2 and MFC4, it was difficult to distinguish anode performance, and anode CV can be a solution. Simple linear regression analysis showed that anode polarization resistance had the statistically significant relationship with maximum power density, optimum current density, and maximum current production in the weak performance cell MFC1. Anode polarization resistance were not statistically significant explanatory variable for maximum power density, optimum current density, and maximum current production in the strong performance cells. That is, when RAN decrease by 1 ohm, maximum power density, optimum current density, and maximum current production increase by 14.2 milliwatts per square meter, 45.2 milliwatts per square meter and 90.8 milliwatts per square meter, respectively. However, cathode polarization resistance had the statistically significant relationship with PMAX, IOPT and IMAX in the good performance cells. Internal resistance was a statistically significant explanatory variable for PMAX, IOPT and IMAX in all the MFCs. In terms of the response IPRO, Table S4, PMAX and IOPT were statistically significant explanatory variables in MFC2 and MFC4. Both MFCs produced similar performance, and they were better than the other cells. In MFC3, RAN was statistically significant explanatory variable for IPRO. In MFC1, no statistically significant explanatory variable was detected for IPRO. The multilinear regression analysis shows both RAN and RCAT were statistically significant explanatory variables for all the tested responses, PMAX, IOPT and IMAX, in the weak MFC1. Absolute values of its standardized coefficients of RAN were larger than those of RCAT in all the responses, showing that anode has a greater effect on MFC performance in MFC1. However, in the three strong MFCs, statistically significant explanatory variables were very different depending on responses and reactors. Absolute values of their standardized coefficients of cathode polarization resistance were usually larger than those of anode polarization resistance, showing that cathode has a greater effect on MFC performance. Conclusively, for PMAX, IOPT and IMAX, anode polarization resistance was a statistically significant explanatory variable in the weak MFC1, cathode polarization resistance was that in the strong MFCs, and RINT was that of all MFCs. In MFC1, anode polarization resistance was the only statistically significant explanatory variable in the simple linear regression analysis. And it had a greater effect on responses in the multilinear regression analysis than cathode polarization resistance. It indicates that a bad anode is a bottleneck or a major limiting factor in MFC1 performance. Cathode is the performance limiting factor when MFC performance is good. In a previous study, cathode was the main performance limiting factors in the MFC treating brewery wastewater, suggesting that this reactor performed well. LSV polarization test and statistical analysis suggest one principle of improving MFC performance, improve anodes in weak MFCs and cathodes in strong MFCs. Last is conclusion. In this study, the effect of anode appeared to be an initial factor for long-term MFCs operation. One worthwhile result was that one of four anodes might have a failed inoculation process, making the success inoculation was 50 to 75%, two very strong anode performance, one strong anode and one weak anode performance. This rate is useful for researchers to control and manage strong anodes for the reproducible experiment.
weak anode performance possibly due to the immature anode, resulting in high anode resistance and cell internal resistance, resulting in low power production. There was no evidence for cathode performance degradation however, the MFC's performance did not increase correspondingly to the anodic current production enhancement. Further research is needed to elucidate the inconsistent enhancement between full cell performance and anodic current. Simple linear. Regression analysis indicated that in weak MFC, anode was the only statistically significant explanatory. Variable and multiple linear regression showed that anode was the factor negatively controlling power responses. Our study showed that after nine weeks, MFCs could obtain stable performance. However, an inoculated anode needed more than 17 weeks to attain a fully mature state. Thank you for your attention. If you like this video please like, subscribe, share and don't forget to press the bell icon to get latest videos.